So I'm John O'Shea, I'm the Senior Exhibitions Manager here at the National Science and Media Museum uh, which is in Bradford in the north of England. Uh, in November of this year we've launched a major exhibition about uh, the topic of fake news. Conventionally as museums we're concerned with uh, history and with the past. Our collections here are concerned with the history of media, so things like cameras, television equipment, etc. Um, but as a, as a museum, what we're trying to assert is the relevance of this material to the contemporary uh, situation. And fake news uh, has been the major news story of 2017. It's been a concern from the perspective of what can we trust in the media, from the perspective of what, what does it mean when we re receive information on platforms like Facebook, which, which may or may not be true. Um, and so we thought it was really, really important to do something at the end of the year to try and reflect on this subject matter and to try to uh, look at our materials in our collection in relation to this topic. Our process was, it was quite tricky because fake news as a term is actually something which is very, very difficult to define. Um, in fact, it's sort of a term that resists uh, definition. What we did was we worked with a number of researchers here at the museum with our curators uh, we also worked with the Peace Studies Department at the University of Bradford and we tried to look at contemporary instances where um, fake news has come up as a, as a um, problem or as a concern and then we tried to find historic examples that seem to connect to that. So the example behind me uh, is a really good example. In um, 1917, two young women um, created what they said were images of fairies, uh, so they used uh, the most advanced technology for image making of its time that they had access to, the, the box brownie camera, um, and they produced these images in their back garden of uh, the, the two young women with the fairies uh, and presented these images to their parents. Um, and at the time, it was very, very difficult for people to say, you know, is this a real image or is this a false image? And so gradually that then became uh, a sort of actually an, an international media story of its day. So what we've done is we've linked that type of story to contemporary instances of trolling, of false media um, being carried in social media, and also of this fact that if, if you want to believe in something, if you think that something fits with your ideas, then you're more likely to, uh, to share it or to talk to other people about it and to advocate for it. Um, you know, in, in this instance, you know, fairies, who doesn't want to believe in fairies? Human beings are always working in relation to the technologies of their time. Um, in 2017, going into 2018, um, we're experiencing a convergence of many, many different types of media technologies. So in every person's pocket, generally, they'll have a smartphone. Uh, that smartphone will enable the individual to view news stories. It also in enables the individual to take photographs, to share information. Um, it has a very sophisticated uh, onboard computing capability, but it also is linked to all kinds of sophisticated platforms like Facebook, like Twitter, uh, which are, are these platforms which are carrying media, like Google, which is a platform which is aggregating uh, information and presenting it to individuals. And so that in itself is an incredibly complex uh, technological environment. Um, and so when lots of these different factors come together, the outcomes can be quite unusual and quite strange. So one of the examples we've flagged up in the exhibition is the way in which um, news stories have been um, promoted and aggregated through platforms like Facebook, which have no um, conventional editorial oversight. And so the background of these platforms has presented stories to people which the platform thinks people want to see. Uh, if I'm a supporter of um, the US President Donald Trump, then I will see more stories which are um, supportive of uh, the, his campaign, etc. But one of the things which has come up is if individuals are trained in topics like history, where they're trained to look at different sources of information and to look at the validity of those sources, um, the public at large, I think, need to be conscious of, of these types of skills. And one of the things we've shown in the exhibition are uh, a set of different toolkits 
which advise people, particularly in the instance of a breaking news story, to think about where is this information coming from? How do I know this information is accurate? What could be the negative consequences of sharing this information? Am I going to cause panic by sharing this information? And so I think as much as um, our news platforms have changed, um, I think as citizens, as individuals who are consuming news, we also have a responsibility in, the, in how we relate to that material. And I think only through education, awareness, um, and um, trial and error, I think people are going to probably renegotiate their relationship to the, to the news that they, um, they receive.